of the year that that's Tom Turkey. This year it keeps close up. Every glory. You're going to like some confetti here on our set. We love this. Our feather friend, there he is. He's the longest. <laughs> that is Hoda. Hoda, Hoda, Hoda. That's Hoda Kotby. Kotib? Hoda? Choking on confetti during the Thanksgiving Day Parade. And I have a few favorite parts from the Thanksgiving Day Parade, but that's number one. And I have to say, my favorite float was the life insurance float. So, not only happy Thanksgiving, but you can save money on life insurance right now on Thanksgiving. So, be thankful. But remember, life insurance. And then they have somebody on the float singing on the life insurance float. But let me tell you, Hoda, 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 she's a character. And my dad told me... Um, I've never, I've never watched her show, but I know that she's a character and my dad loves watching her on television because he said that she gets blasted on television with supposedly, because I have to, I have to put that little clause there or I can get sued by MSNBC or whoever the hell. But my dad said that she, her and uh, the other one, Nancy or whoever drink out of huge glasses of wine and they get trashed and talk about current events. So that's fantastic. And he he thinks she's puffing it up a little bit on the side. I don't know. I can't say. But Hoda 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 looks like a, a fun time. Like if I saw her at the club, man, you know, I'm not going to be pursuing anybody. I'm going to be like, how can I become friends with Hoda and friggin bump my glass against hers? you know, our shot glasses. So that's what that meant. Um, let me, I have one more thing I I have to show. My hands are like really greasy. I don't know why I don't understand that, but let me, I have one more, one more clip for you to listen to. It's very important. Uh, here we go. This is how, this is how I think we all feel sometimes. And Hoda you know, really, um, this is like, you know, a 2020 kind of mood. Here we go. Like, what, what is happening? I would love to know what goes on behind the scenes. Hoda Rocks. I'm going to, like, do, a, like, a clothing clothing brand and put Hoda Rocks, but spelt. And then people think it's, like, oh, Yoda? Like, baby Yoda? No, like, Hoda. Hoda. And I'm going to put Hoda Rocks, R-O-X. Got to make it different. Um, so I, on last podcast, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ignore, I'm not going to ignore the goat in the room here. But I said I was going to talk about the Free Britney movement. And I will speak about that next week. I apologize. I wanted to do more research on it. And I I don't want to just sit here and like pull things, you know, out of just thin air. I want to actually do my research and talk to you about it. Because I'm truthful on my podcast. I'm not just going to lie about things. So I'm going to do my research. And the next week I'll go into it a little bit and break it, break it down. I'll break it down. But just as of right now, I just, I wanted to focus on some other things. So I'll definitely be speaking about that in the future. So if you were sitting here, you know, listening to the podcast in your uh, free Britney t-shirt with your Britney foam finger with your Britney posters in the back, I'm sorry. But just stay excited because next week I will be speaking about it. So over uh, the Thanksgiving vacation, I went to a family friend's house and that was a great time. There were deer there, and for the first time ever in my life, I saw a deer with horns. And first of all, I thought I was discovering something that has never been seen before. I was like, oh shit, I'm going to call 
um animal discovery channel animal planet discovery channel animal planet not discovery animal planet channel and let them know like i seen this this funky deer here you know with these two horns i've never seen that in my life when you see a deer you either see those big antlers or you really don't i feel like that's only in christmas movies but yeah you know you see a deer and they just have those little ears or you know medium-sized ears you don't see these little horns so i was like oh you know shit like this is like you know finding a rare pokemon you know, I found, like, a, like a real-life shiny Pokemon, and I started to, you know, do the the narration in the back, and I was like, a deer, a deer comes over, and he's got the horns, and then the other deer's taking a good look at him, you know, and I was doing the thing, and then they were, they were starting to look at me, so I'm like, you know, you know, I'm not the acorn you're trying to eat, you know, because these, I think these deers forget that I took five kickboxing classes, and I think everybody seems to forget that. So, this is a message to everyone who is like, oh, you know, one day I think I want to take Mary. You know, I want to, I want to lay some hands. You know, when you think about that, I wouldn't because I've punched a bag many times. And do you want to take the place of that bag? I don't think so. See, I saw deer, you know, that's, that's a fun sight to see, you know, in these, these COVID times. Um, so I saw saw those deers Mm, I ate a lot of food you know Um, so that was fun and then um, I ended up going to Woodstock which is where they had the Woodstock festival and that was in 1969 and it was really it was really fun I had a really nice time. It, it was just very surreal seeing that area because they have the museum area and then they have the field where Woodstock took place. And in the field where it took place, they have like a, you know how you can cut the grass in a certain way and it could like say a message or whatever. Um, sorry, I got distracted by one of my cats because I don't even know what to say. So they did a peace sign in the grass. And that was really cool. So I was just really standing there and imagining, you know, what happened here and how they fit all of those people. Um, tens of thousands. Oh, oh my God. I'm a disaster right now. Let me see how many people were at Woodstock. I think I know the number. I'm going to say 50,000. Let me see. How many people were at Woodstock? How many people died at Woodstock? Three deaths, two drug overdoses, and one got ran over by a tractor trailer. That is awful. I remember reading that at the museum. I was like, what? Um, so are they not going to tell me how many people? Attendance. Hello. Um, attendance. Definitely spelled that wrong. Attendance. Cool. Um, 400,000. That is insane. That's almost half a million people for all my, you know, I'm, you know, my strong suit is English and science, me. Uh, That's about half, almost half a million. So I just couldn't imagine how many people were there. And just iconic acts, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, the band, Grateful Dead. Those are the ones I remember right off the bat. Let me see, because they had the whole, they had the whole squad here. Um, the Who, Crosby, Stills and Nash, Jefferson Airplane, Joan Baez, Santana, Sly and the Family Stone, Shanana. All right, well, yeah. So they performed there, and I was reading about some of the areas because you can walk around the outside area and. Uh, they said that some people went in this river that they had there on that that farmland and just were bathing in there naked and drugged up. And, like, I think that, like, that's, there's something really cool about that. And I'm not just saying, be, being, being naked and drugged up, that's cool, kids. You know, that's not, that's not what it's, it's not what I'm saying here. I, I just think it's cool, like, how free they were, and I think that that, is really because there's something 
see, I don't, the way I'm going to say it, just it's not going to sound right. You know, you're really like you put yourself in a very vulnerable place being on drugs and being naked and then other people, you know, being the same and that there's it's just, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to there's just something really free about that. And I just, you know, I wonder if I've ever felt that free in my life, how those people felt that weekend. And I'm not going to um, do drugs and go be naked and, and find out I'm not going to do that. But I'm just saying that, that these people really, like, were willing to just you know I, I i couldn't imagine the first person that was like yeah let me be naked and be on drugs and just you know be here you know feel this here you know and everybody else started doing it it's just like very very interesting and i wonder if i will feel free to that extent you know because originally you know without we're, humans weren't built to work nine to five jobs i mean i'm not getting all uh you know, oh, oh, hips, hips, hipster on you, you know, it's, I'm just saying, like, if there weren't jobs and capitalism, like, we would literally just all be naked walking in the forest, eating berries and, you know, knuckle touching the, the antelopes in the wild. So, I mean, I just wonder, what? I think I just got a package. At this time? I'm a little nervous. Um, I'm going to have to check that out. But I just... Like, I, I'm wondering if that's... They, they felt free to that extent, you know? Because, you know, like, even in a bikini sometimes, or like in a in a bathing suit, you feel like... You know, I don't know how you feel, but I'm, I, f I feel like judged sometimes, or like... You know, I, I, like, even if nobody else is say, thinking what I look like or, oh, she looks like this, she looks like that. Like, just subconsciously, you're like, I look like this right now. And I think that's not that you have to be on drugs or you have to be naked to feel this way. But just to feel free in your own skin and to other people f be free in their own skin and just to feel comfortable. What's the... My cat just, like, jumped into the Christmas tree. And I'm trying to have a serious thing. I thought somebody was breaking into the house. Oh my gosh. I have to breathe a little bit here. Oof. I had one glass of wine. And just all hell is breaking loose in this household. And the dog is chasing the cat. But. Yeah, like I said, I just think, I think there's something, uh. You know, to feel that free is cool. And I'm not saying, you gotta take drugs to feel this free. You know, it's just, it's just cool to, you know, I wonder, you know, like a collective kind of, you know frame of mind where it was just I'm seeing you for you right now you know and I'm, I'm not everybody was probably like that I bet some people were like yeah I'm trying to you know I have an agenda here I'm trying to you know uh you know hook up with people whatever dude you know what I mean you know but the people that were just like I feel free right now that's that's a cool feeling you know um because society is like you know we're, we're like born to like fit this mold and this is socially acceptable and like to actually like feel free and it's just you know in which ways do you feel free it's just you know it's a really cool question to just ponder on you know and I've been thinking about that lately too just from seeing that stuff it's like you know what situations in my life have I been in that I felt free like how those people probably have you know how they felt free in that moment how and how does that relate to like where in my life where did I feel free like the freest in my life when and why did I feel that free and how can I feel it again or how can I feel it more often in my life not you know in my own way so I think that's a, that's very interesting and I wrote down in my my notepad here because I was talking about you know we're literally supposed to be eating berries and foraging for food and maybe not even speaking English you know that's what we are primitively. And I just wondered if all we had were our minds and our bodies, would we appreciate them more? And I've been also thinking about that as well. Because it's just the world and society feeds you so many things and like shrouds you in this 
cloth of importance, you know, of things that are supposed to be important. And they're really not. And we all get caught up in it. Like money and status and how we look and how other people think of us. And I just wonder if none of that was a pressure. And all we had really was it was our minds and our bodies. You know, would we would we treat them differently? Would we appreciate them more? So And I'm working on that too. I wanna when the new year starts, I've already been working on it. I wanna like meditate more, I wanna pray more, I wanna become more active, and I wanna, you know, treat my body well and treat my mind well and you know, do things that help me to grow and, you know, to push myself to just grow and and be better. Because I think with COVID and then with work and things, I've been, you know, feeling really stagnant. And I want to, you know, just constantly be improving myself. And even if that's just a little day by day kind of thing I want to make a list and I also want to work on making a gratitude list every morning and just really like I know what's important and I've been focusing on it but I want to focus on it more and just really narrow down like this is what's really important to me this is what I want to work on and this is how this is my plan this is how I want to get better in every aspect of my life that I can. So I'm going to be working on that. But uh, that's, that's not very funny. But I want it to be real. I want it to be real. But Woodstock was cool. Uh, the museum is really fun. There's a lot of cool information. And it goes through like the the 60s. You know leading up to Woodstock. And everything that happened. And there's just a lot of things that were happening at that time. Um, you know with a lot of you know people you know, for the war, against the war. Um, We were having a lot of, you know, kind of, you know, that was like the height of the racial tension, you know, and and everything going on with Martin Luther King. And like, you just don't realize how, how many things were going on in the 60s that continue to shape everything today. So, you know, that was, that was really like a bulk of where like a a lot of where our culture now comes from is from the 60s so and and a lot of you know a lot of really interesting world events happen then so yeah and it was just interesting reading about all that and then just just a lot of amazing musicians like I I love the music from the 60s and the 70s all the way up till now but I, I definitely um some of my favorite decades decades were the 60s and the 70s wonderful music and I think a lot of that music, it was really, you know, you're hearing the singer sing. You're, you're hearing the voice. You're not, you're not hearing a lot of, you're not hearing computers, you know, auto-tune it and, you know, do this and do that. Like, you're hearing the voice. You're hearing, you're hearing the soul of the person. And I think that that's, you hear that with some music today, but I just feel like that's lacking in a lot of today's music. So it, that's where I really find a lot of my enjoyment music-wise. And I can literally sit in my room and just play 60s and 70s music and just be a happy little, happy little Mary Grace, you know. I was trying to find something interesting to compliment that sentence, but I don't have anything. But highly recommend. Highly recommend. I'm trying to think. There was something crazy that I read at the Woodstock Museum. Yeah, the people passed. There were some people that passed. Um, that's pretty much it and uh, I bought a flute for myself and I always think when I buy like an instrument I'm gonna be able to like pick it up real easily like I read like when I buy an instrument I imagine myself playing that instrument immediately and when I got the flute I was like so excited and then when I start like I started blowing on the flute it was like oh no it's, it's just like brings me back to like my seventh grade recital when everybody else was playing the flute and I sat I literally stood there and hummed and then moved my fingers to make it look like I knew what I was doing and I just hummed the song while I was moving my fingers so it just brings me back and the flute like got it's all like cracked up 
because it was in the back of, back of the car and I guess maybe I pushed the seat back too much and it like cracked the wooden flute but I'm gonna make do because I'm trying to learn how to play the flute you know I love those uh wind instruments so I'm gonna work on that because I wanted to learn how to play an instrument in quarantine my sister has a guitar I'm trying to learn how to do that but you know there's a lot there's a lot of wants but I feel like there's more need than wants. So I, I got I to gotta work on that. And my dad bought me a harmonica. Because I also want to learn how to play the harmonica. I love the song Slowpoke by Neil Young. That's what really influenced me to want to play the harmonica. Because I heard that song and I cried when I heard it. And I cry a lot of the times when I hear it now. Because it's just so, for me it's so moving. I love it. There's so much emotion in that song, and um, he's busking, man. That's that's what it's called when you play the harmonica, and you're really you're breaking it down. It's called busking. So I'm trying to busk, you know. I'm gonna busk on my block, baby. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really gonna carry a harmonica everywhere and just busk at the club, busk at the grocery store, busk for a quick dollar here and there. But I want to, want to learn how to busk. And, you know, when people are going to... You know you know how, like, random dance circles break out? It just seems to happen in a lot of movies. But once in a while it happens in life. And when that happens, I'm going to just hop right in the circle. People are going to be like, wow. Is she going to, like, uh, crimp or crump? She's going to do that crumping thing. And I'm going to be like, no. And I'm just going to whip out my harmonica and just busk. So, yeah. Uh, so, Woodstock was awesome. And then... We also went to Cooperstown, which is where the Baseball Hall of Fame is. And I tried to make a bargain with a guy on shirts. Uh, it didn't work. I still bought the shirts. I love baseball. I'm a huge Met fan. Even though they, they killed me. Killing me softly with a baseball. Killing me softly with a baseball. Hurting my feelings. So. Oh my gosh. Are you okay? My dog, I think, has dog asthma. Um. But. Oh yeah. The Mets kill me, but I still love it. I mean, that's just. It's been a passion of mine since I was a youth. I love softball. I love baseball. Um, I used to play on a female male league with my dad and this like 40 year old man hit a line drive right into my glove and it literally knocked four fingers out of the glove, but I caught it. So there were a lot of fun times with that. I mean, grown men rifling, rifling softballs at me and I fielded a lot of them. So, you know, I'm not no, no slunch. You know, I'm going to catch that ball. And I'm going to throw it. And I did. And I hit it. So I miss those days, man. I miss those days. That's when I was active. Now I'm like a lump. She's lump. She's lump. She's lump. She might be dead. But yeah, I'm, I'm like a lump lately. You know, not being able to go to the gym. Even though I didn't go much before COVID. But that's because I had... um, um Not mesothelioma. That's because I had... Shimano nucleosis and I have scoliosis. So, you know, I just, uh, with the Shimano, I couldn't even leave my bed. And then scoliosis, if you got the scoli, you know what it is. But if not, I'm not going to explain it to you. Because I don't need people telling me, I have scoliosis. Okay? And I was told this my sister doesn't believe I was told by a professional that I have scoliosis. I definitely have scoliosis. Me and my mother went to a top of a mountain in New Jersey and some, some Indian lady told me, you have scoliosis. And it hurt. Okay? But I do. My spine is slightly S-shaped. And that's the truth. Whether you wanted it or not. Where was it? What was I, e what was I even talking about? Um, and there was also a farmer's, farmer's museum there in Cooperstown, a farmer's museum. It's a beautiful little town, beautiful. And I pretended to open the door of the farmer's museum and then I, I walked away for a video. 
So a little cruel, but actually very funny. So I did that. Love baseball, but there were like four floors and me and my dad were like huffing and puffing and like taking breaks. It was like we were too elderly. And like, and I'm 24 years old. There's no way I should be like, I'm ready to go after one floor of museuming. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, I also want to learn how to skateboard. I have a friend that I hit up and she got back to me and then I hit her up again and then she didn't get back to me. So I don't know if, you know, why, why can't you just sell me the skateboard? Was there an ulterior motive here? Um, but yeah, I want to learn how to skateboard. Growing up, I love that show with Ryan Sheckler, Life of Ryan, I think it was something like that. And I loved Ryan Sheckler. I love the skate culture and I, I always played skateboarding video games and I love skateboarding movies and there's something just so beautiful about skateboarding and something that makes me feel so free and young. When I watch like skateboard movies and when I play skateboard games, I just, you know, even though I'm not skateboarding, I feel free and I, I want to feel that feeling. And when I have skateboarded, which is not a lot, but when I, when I have, I've gone extreme. Like I've gone down driveways. I went, you know, in a downhill shop right parking lot and I almost knocked over a couple of people. But when, when I go out, I go all out. I went longboarding and then I had my stepbrother like catapult me. He was, like, running and then pushing me on the board. And, like, I go all out. When I'm serious, I'm serious. So, I've done it a few times. And I really want to be serious. But the thing is, like, I'm 24. I'm older now. So, I have to be careful because my bones are brittle. And also, at skate parks, you're probably going to get, like, really young kids. And then you're going to probably get, like, teens, but in the late teens. So, I don't really fit into either of those groups. Um, the good thing is I look young. So, you know, maybe the young kids will be like, oh, cool, you know, she looks a little old for us, but not, you know, too old that she shouldn't be here. But I think, you know, the teens, you know, they might be like, oh, look at this little, this little girl or whatever. Because I, I wanted to go, like, with no pads. But then everybody in my family's like, if you're going to do that, like, you really have to put on pads. Are you crazy? Because my look, I'll, I'll break my neck. I'll crack my neck. So I don't want to do that. Because literally, I was just walking up the curb with, um some uh, grocery bags and I literally twisted my whole ankle to the point where I was crying on the curb so imagine having a piece of wood with wheels under me but I'm serious and when I'm determined and I want to do something I'm gonna do it plus I'm I thought I would grow out of this like you know I want to skateboard I never did so I said now's the time I'm only getting older uh and when I'm 30 with a full-time job I don't think I'll be able to have time to skateboard so now I can actually make time and just give it the old college try and really learn how to do it enjoy it and then ride a skateboard until I break something and then just not skateboard anymore but my plan is to get a skateboard go to the skate park at the crack of dawn at like seven in the morning so hopefully nobody's there in my full garb with all the pads and my helmet and skateboard go down the ramps and if I bust ass nobody will know It'll be like a, the tree fall, a tree falling in the wild. You don't hear it. It never happened. And then I don't have to be criticized by children trying to determine my age. And then by teens trying to determine my age. Because I don't want like children and teens laughing at me. And I don't want to like get beat up. Because I don't know. I feel like in movies that happens. Like, like hey look she's alone. What a loser. You know with her skateboard or whatever. And, like, I could see, like, literally probably, like, 15, 16-year-olds coming up to me and, like, bullying me. And then me telling them, like, hey, I'm 24, you know? Like, I'm older than you and you shouldn't be talking to me like this. But, I mean, who's going to take me seriously when I have a helmet on and four pads on my body? But I'm serious. I'm going to do it. And when I do it, maybe I'll do a little vlog and I'll put it on the YouTubes or on a live so we can all talk and we can all laugh. Because I'm just trying to have fun at the end of the day. I'm not trying to be, like... Tonette Hawk, you know? That was the dream when I was younger, but I would just love to do it as a hobby and just skate around. My goal is to do the ramps. So I will I will try that and when I'm when I you know get a date, a solid date of when I'm gonna do it, I'll let you guys know. My diet didn't start yet. That's gonna happen in January. New Year Hootis, New Year, New Mary, New Year, New Me. I remember 
when I was on a, a very strict diet, I was just trying to eat avocados. That was just my thing. More like avocado don't because it just didn't last. They're delicious, but I mean, there's only so many days you can just eat avocados. And I remember one time I was trying to be really health conscious and I brought salad to school and then I, I left the dressing in the salad and then left it in my car and that's all I had to eat. So it was like a soup salad, a salad soup, and then I drank it. And it sort of kind of, you know, scars me. So, you know, so now I can't really have salad in like hot places because it just reminds me of that. But I remember after that, I, I had a class like an hour later. So I took a nap in my car and it was probably 90 degrees out. But I told myself, this is my logic, that if I'm sleeping... I don't feel what I would feel awake and that's a lie when I woke up I woke up in a hot sweat and I was confused I didn't know where I was so my mind was like a little inebriated from that summer sun because you know I guess people if they sleep in their car they put their windows down but I'm from the hood and I don't play that and I know if I leave my my window down who knows, who knows what's going to go in and out of that window. So, you know, that's how you get killed. So I, I was like, you know what, I'll rather, I'd rather take the chance. I'll sleep in here in a 90 degree, in the, 90, 90, 90 degree car with my window up. It's a short time. Well, what's the worst could happen? I could have literally died in that car and nobody would have known. So that's not going to happen again. But I just feel like somebody would like punch me in my face if I left my window down or steal my car. So I just can't, you know, I'm no better in one way, in one sense. Hmm. The good old days, the good old days. Oh, I did some Christmas shopping and I spent over $500. So I, I cashed out. I spent big bucks because I, I've been uh, working more. So I saved my money and I said, let me go all out and spend on my family. So that's almost done. You know, I'm almost done shopping for them. So that's pretty cool. And I couldn't help but buy some items for myself. Um, so I did. And I bought two discounted pairs of jeans. Actually, they're jeggings. Which are leggings disguised as jeans. And this is my life now. But not those jeggings without pockets. I don't play that. I don't play that. That's like a that's like a very popular trend in my neighborhood. And I have to have pockets on it. I can't just have you know the pockets, you know, keep a little you know, keep you a little distracted. You know, and I need to I need to have a place to put my hands. In my own pockets. So, yeah, I bought two pairs of discounting jegs, but I, you can't even tell, which is the reason why I buy them. They're comfortable, and nobody knows they're jeggings. And there's nothing wrong with jeggings, but I just, like, they look like jeans. So, I mean, it, it's a modern miracle, to tell you the truth. And I needed a few, I needed to spend a few more bucks to, books, I needed a few more, uh, come here, pig. That's uh, Bill Clinton. So I needed to spend a few more dollars to get free shipping. So I bought a perfume. And I I was like, let me buy that one that they spray in the store that tempts you to buy Hollister stuff. Like Hollister jeans and all. They spray that so your mind is like, oh wow, that smells delicious. Let me buy clothes. So I was determined to get that one. And I did some online research and it's a consumerism technique by the way they they want they do that so it leaves a positive impact on your brain so you're more likely because if you walk into a place and it smells like shit you're not going to buy jeans but if it smells delicious you're like mm, it smells good maybe since it smells good maybe these jeans will look good and maybe I will be good if I buy something from this place because it smells delicious in here. So that was explaining it to you 
bare bones. Somebody could definitely word it better, but I think you get what I mean. So I bought this perfume called SoCal and now I smell like a a teenage douchebag. I'm just a teenage douchebag, baby. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what my life is now. I am going to learn how to skateboard and smell like a teenager while I do it. So this is my life. If you ever wonder like what Mary is up to, this is what I'm up to. Oh, and I don't know if you, you guys saw online, I saw this online, that Obama, Bush, and Clinton will agree to take the vaccine and do it on television. Like, if I I wasn't going to take it before, I'm definitely not taking it now. That is, like, what? Just think about that for a second. Like, why do they feel like they need to convince people to do that? Like, it's just very, very scary when you think about it. And the fact that, first of all, we don't know what they're putting in their bodies. So, I mean, there's no way that they can show us that it's it's the right vaccine. That's n- number one. And number two, the, the fact that they feel like, all right, well, we're going we're gonna to do it on TV, guys, so you can trust it, like... Why do you feel the need to do that? That's just... Like, imagine... Think about it from, you know, any other country doing that. You would be like, why are these ex-presidents all vowing to take it on TV? Like, what are they trying to prove? So we can all take it, and and then what? And we we don't even know what it does yet. So I was like... (laughs) You know, if I... But squeeze me? (laughs) You know... So, you know, do your research because, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. That makes me not trust it even more. The fact that, like, yeah, we're going to do it. Like, why? That makes me even more nervous, to be honest with you. Um, I also watched the Mike Tyson versus uh, Roy Jones Jr. fight. And they had Wiz Khalifa come on. He said, yeah, you know what it is. Everything I do, I do it big. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. And that was my ringtone in high school. So, love that song. Uh, I didn't, with Jake Paul, I thought it was going to be... At first, I thought he was going to gonna get beat. And then I told my sister about it. And try to convince her to help pay for the fight. Um, and she said... You know, he's probably going to beat that guy, that Nate Robinson guy, because he he actually does this. Like, apparently, Jake Paul has been doing it for some time, and I didn't know that. And I was like, wow, but I, I thought it was going to be an even fight, and he rocked Nate uh, Nate Robinson. And you could just tell, though, like, Nate Robinson isn't an experienced fighter, and neither, like, Jake Paul, I think, has only been doing it for, like, a year. But, I mean, I am excited to see Jake Paul actually fight somebody that's an actual boxer, because... You can be all tough and you can be in great shape, but if you don't know how to box, you're not going to match up with an actual boxer. You know, so that's... I'm talking about Nate Robinson and Jake Paul now. Like, Nate Robinson's great shape, look like he could fight, but if you don't know how, you're not going to match up to somebody who actually trained for it longer than you. And I heard he only did it for, like, two months. So I'm just really excited to see, you know, it's all, oh, great, yeah, I'm, like, the best ever. I'm going to do this in a rap career, whatever he's doing. You know, I'm excited to see him match up against an actual boxer and then... Then we can really see, you know, where he's at, you know. So, I, I'm, you know, I, I definitely want to see what happens with that. Because it'll definitely be uh, more level, you know, more of an even playing field that way. You know, and if they're just cherry picking, you know, celebrities, it's always going to be like that. You know what I mean? If you're just picking people that don't usually fight or, or haven't done it as long, it's most likely that's going to be the result. But yeah, so I just wonder if he's going to take that seriously or not. But I, I was scared for for Robinson's life. That was really bad. Like, I've never seen somebody go down like that in my life. But, you know, I, I respect him for going in there. But, you know, I think he should have done some more research. Because that's just nothing to play with. Like, getting punched around, that's nothing to play with. You know, because it, it, I don't think it was worth it for him. He probably got paid a good amount of money, but was it really worth it? You know, because he, he could have died. That that looked really bad. 
yeah, I don't, I don't know why anybody didn't, didn't advise him, like, this is the level he's on and, you know, you look good, but are you on the same level where, you know, you won't get hurt? But, yeah, I mean, I, but I do respect him for going in there, for saying, I want to do this. He went in there with confidence, you know, he was passionate about it, and I respect him for going in there. And he did his best, you know, and that's cool, man. You know, people are, like, ripping him a new one, and it's like, okay, but he did it and you didn't, so... I mean, the fact that he, you know, said he wanted to do it. He did it. He did his best. It's just, it was just unmatched. It was just unmatched. So, and then Mike, the the Mike Tyson fight. I mean, how, how did they, it, it's a draw because they want to do it again and then have more people pay for it. You know, that, that was awful. And I didn't think the fight was good, the Tyson fight. But the best, my favorite part was, I think, three fights before that in the beginning, there was some guy, two guys were fighting, and then some guy punched another guy in the stomach, esophagi region. And if you hit something called, like, the lymphus or something like that, it makes, like, it makes somebody, like, freeze where they can't even... The one guy was, like, on his knees, he couldn't move. Like, literally, like, got him down. And if you... That's, like, a natural reaction. If you hit somebody in that area, they're going down. So I want to learn how to do that just for fun. Because, man, he, he punched that dude real hard in his lymph fist, and that guy, went, that guy went right down. Like a ton of bricks. So that's just interesting. That, you know, parts of the body, if you hit it real hard, y- it'll stop you right in your tracks. So I thought that was really interesting, and that was cool. That was, like, my favorite takeaway. That, you know, I could, like, literally poke someone in an area, and, like, boom, they're, like, they're frozen. So I'm going to practice that. So, like I said, don't mess with me. People and deer, don't mess with me. But thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Um, I missed you all on my hiatus, but I'm happy to be back. And there will be an episode every week, you know, until I don't I don't see uh, it stopping anytime soon. So I will definitely catch you next week. I appreciate you. I love you. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and, you know, bundle up. It's cold out there. Don't try to not wear socks because that's how you get hypothermia and probably asthma. So be careful. Um, Love you guys and have a great day and great night. It's so awkward. I I thought I could just end it and I just keep talking about my, now my dog is like scratching himself and shaking the whole house. So have a wonderful night. Thanks for tuning in. Peace out cousins. And I will catch you next week. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.